Well, we say good evening. Glad to have you tuning in with us, those that are here and those tuning in. We're going to start out with a song, 139, Great is Thy Faithfulness. So we'll start verse 1. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto me, summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness. To thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Number three, pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Let's just ask yourself a question. Has he been faithful to us? All through our lives he has. Let's open a word of prayer, please. Father, we do thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. It's you that takes care of us, Lord. It's you that brings us to church. It is you that gives us a strong uh, connection with yourself, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for all that come out tonight. Ask and pray that you would just bless his service. We love you, Father, and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I hope everyone's having a good week. It's really good to come back to church. If you don't come to church through the week, you miss out. Because God is faithful and God is here with us. He instructs us. He brings us to, a, to a, a, an understanding of who he is and what he desires. Now, we're going to chapter 24 in the book of Job. And there are now 23 and 24 tied together. In the in the chapter twenty three, Job said, "Where is God? Why can't I find God? I've got so much I want to commit to Him. I want to know why why these things are happening in my life." But you know what? Same with the, with us, God's not going to answer 
our prayers until he's right. When he's ready, he'll give us those answers. So we went through that last week, and uh, now we're going to start into chapter 24. And there you find in verse 1, why sin times are not uh, hidden from the Almighty. Do they know not? See his days? Some remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and feed thereof. They drive away the donkeys of the fatherless. They take the widow's ox for a pledge. They turn the needy out of the way. The poor of the earth hideth themselves together. Behold, as wild don uh, donkeys in the desert, so go they forth to their work, rising bet betimes for a prey. The wilderness uh, yieldeth food for them and for their children. Let's stop right there and, and discuss this. When you see, and look in our world, let's, let's take it from that uh, uh, point of view. When you see in the world that how many people truly have a love for other people, or do they take? And I think you find in, in so many ways that people, they want to take away from you, whether it be in, in business or whatever. But God is faithful to his own. And he's looking how he can grow us and make us into strong people. Now, does any person, and I thought about this today, does any person have a, a right to question God? Can we say, why, Lord, why? Chances are he's not going to say it. He's not going to give an answer, and I'll tell you why. Because he works on his timetable. He don't work on our timetable or what we think he ought to do. He is a merciful God, a loving God, but he still, he wants us to learn, even through our hard times. And that's what Job is doing right now. He's learning. Why, Lord, won't you answer me? I am so down, so troubled, so many things going wrong. My friends have turned against me. Why won't you answer me, Lord? I can just almost see God and say, well, you just hold on. You hold on. It's going to get better. It's going to get good. You're going to come back with more than you ever had before. You're going to get your health back. You're going to have friends again. And God is merciful and he's just. And he wants the very best for, for each and every one. What would we do if we found ourselves in the predicament that Job's in? How would we react to that? Will we throw our hands up and say, I'm, I'm dying, Lord, I'm dying? God says, you won't die until I call you out. Job, was a, he was a child of God. He loved the Lord. You go back to the first chapter. It tells you he was a righteous man. He loved the Lord. But Job did not understand what was happening in his life. Have you ever had a time like that, that things maybe happen in you, and you say, I don't know why this is happening to me. God says, I've got you in school. of learning, a school of growing, just hold on and wait on me. The Bible says, They that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run, not be weary, and they'll walk and not faint. Now, that's what God does. That's not what we can do of ourselves, but it's what God can do. Now, there's a lot of hurting people in our world today. A lot of little children being abused, as he's talking there, about taking their food away from them, even taking their clothes away from them. But a lot of little children are hurting. And that's where we need to pray hard for them. We need to be ones that will reach out to them. If they need food, then watch what we do as Christians, as a church. So let us do that. God is always in the right place at the right time. But we have to look up and truly say, Lord, train me and make me into something great for your sake, that you might receive glory and honor because I want to serve you. And that's what God wants for us to do, all of us, is to grow in grace. What does the Bible say? For by grace are you saved. It's God-given grace. It's what we get received from him. But we have to trust him. We have to wait on him. That's hard. That's hard. Have you ever really wrung your hands because you didn't get what you wanted at the moment? I'd say we all have, sometime or another. But God says, just, just hold on. 
Just hold on and let me teach you and show you a better way, a way that not only will please those around you, but it will please your God because you did wait. And that's what God expects from us. And that's what we should do. Now, God is always ready and willing to respond to pain, uh, loss of our wealth, loss of things. We live a good life. You know that? We may not have everything in this world we want, but our God's merciful. He's a wonderful God. He's a loving God. I don't have, I don't have no complaints against my God and should none of us because of the way he takes care of us. If we wake up in the mornings and we go through the day and we're fed, we're clothed, we stay warm in the, sun, in the winter time, why would we ever say, Lord, you're not taking care of me? I don't have this and I don't have that. Job, he didn't know how to handle this. He had never seen anything like this before. He had never seen a time when all he had just dissipated. It was just taken away. Go back to verse 6. They reap everyone his corn in the field, and they gather the vintage of the wicked. Now these are the ones that have been put down. They're God's people, if you will. There are those that trust the Lord, but they've been really dealt a bad blow by the wicked. Folks, you can't live in, a, in God's world without wicked being around you because they are there. They're, they're not God-fearing people, but they are those that try to, to bring into themselves and take from anyone that they can to have their pockets full. And God will not be in that. They cause the naked to lodge without clothing, that they have no covering in the cold. That's harsh. It really is. And because... You take back in that day, and Job, he's looking back at when, when uh, uh, the wicked took everything he had. They took his cattle, his donkeys, they took all of that. They took his land, they took his crops. So Job, is he's thinking about this, and looking back, this is what you can expect because of there's wickedness all around you. They are wet with the showers of the mountains, and embrace the rock for what, for want of a shelter. That's what they're saying. We're, we're, we're without clothes, without food. Where's God? When we think about it, Lord, don't you see how I'm hurting? Can't you see that, that I need you right now and hurry? God says, I've got this under control. I don't know why we, we fret. I don't know why we wring our hands when we trust God. Let him be our guide. Let him be the one that grows us and builds us up. Lord, you've taken so much away from me. Folks, just put faith in God. Just look to him and trust in him. Let God be our guide, our strength. Like the Bible says, our strong foundation. Let him be all of that. God has us right in the palm of his hand, Christian. And he will punish the wicked in his time. We are not to punish other people. I know our, our laws, you know, they set death penalties and all, but I'm talking about the individual. Why would we try to harm, harm another person when God has got it in control? Lord, I don't know how I'm going to take all of this. I've been brutally hurt in, in, in every way. God says, let me handle this. Let me just guide in this. Let me be your, your, your uh, uh, whatever you need. Just let me handle all of that. The way Job's friends responded to him in the middle of the ashes, and they declared and had uh, aspired, despaired, had to sink him further down. Can I tell you something about God? I don't care where you find yourself. God's present. He's right there. You don't have to worry about that. What our part is, have faith in God. Trust in him with all our hearts. And don't lean to, to what people say or what the world tries to show you. But trust in God with all your heart. And that's what he asks. 
Now, they were punished by the wicked. They were treated uh, terribly, if you will. They pluck the fatherless from the breast and take a pledge of the poor. They cause him to go naked without clothing they, and take away the sheep from the hungry, which make all within their walls and tread their wine press and suffer thirst. That's brutality. I was looking up a couple of scriptures on that. 1 Timothy 5.18, there it says, For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the donkey that treadeth out the corn, and the labor is worthy of his reward. In other words, a worker ought to be given food and help and drink whatever they need. Because if they're working out in the heat and all, don't they need some nourishment? Don't they need some, some something to eat? That type of thing. God's watching all of that. But we have to follow God. Folks, what we do not understand is that God will act in his time, not ours. I can't tell God what to do. I can't tell him, Lord, I need this, or Lord, you saw what they did to me. Uh, you strike them. God will not be in that. But we have to trust in him and put him first. Job couldn't understand all this. He had been through all these things. He had really been put down. So he is uh, reminiscing back when all his trouble started, when they really took everything he had. If that wasn't enough, he was stricken down with the boils, with the hurts, the pains. There he is sitting in the middle of, of ashes because he probably didn't have anywhere to go, or they wouldn't let him go because they looked at him like they would a leper. You know what, though? God was with him. God was with him. I don't care where we find ourselves, Christian. God is with us, and he will take care of his own. Now, we need to, to uh, look at our lives. We need to let God instruct us. We need to let God look through us and in us and see, Lord, am I serving you like you'd have me to? Am I doing what you have called me to do? Or am I saying, I want what I want, when I want it? God's not going to honor that because he has got us in training. I know a lot of people don't like that word. God's training us because it brings on hard times sometimes. But God knows what he's doing. Let's talk about the wicked. It has been said, the dark of a friend to evildoers is the light that they think they have. Where do you find most of your, like your bars and stuff, where do they operate the most? In the dark. In the dark. Why? Because that is where they bring in the most people. Is God in there? Folks, we know he's not in there. God is a merciful God, but he's also a God that will bring uh, terrible things on the wicked. I wonder how many people that are lost died this very day. It's sad. It really is. Especially those have been told. I've talked to a few saying, uh, you ought to get right with God. Well, I'll take my chances, or I will in time. I uh, asked one lately, you go to church? No. I said, well, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. But why won't you go to church? That's where you learn about God. That's where you learn about the ways of God. So what will we do? You know, our job is, is rescue the person. Reach out to people. Let the world know what a wonderful God we really had. Now, Job here is giving an argument to his friends concerning and the teaching about the sudden demise of the wicked. Now, his friends said they will get struck down instantly. But that's not the way it is. I know every one of us has known many persons that was rich, had all this world would offer them, and they lived a long life. But then, what about after that? What about when they, they have to stand before God? We think about the rich man of Lazarus. 
The rich man, he died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. All the things he had through his whole life. Poor Lazarus. He was sick. He couldn't walk. He begged. But you know what? In God's time, he provided everything Lazarus needed. Folks, we can learn from that. We can learn that God has got the best out there waiting for us. Our life may not be the greatest right now, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to what others can say or your own understanding. Keep your eyes on God and let him instruct you. Now, as we read chapters 23 and 24, Job responds to the wrong thoughts of his friends. You say the wicked are instantly taken care of. But that's not so. It's just not so. But there is coming that day, like a rich man on the, at, around Lazarus. He was paying a price, just begging for just a little water. But you know, it's too late. I wish we could get that message out to people. Make your decision this day before it's everlasting too late. Don't look back. Look forward, call on God, and he'll save your soul. But if they don't, then their life is in their own hands as far as, as eternity because they're going to suffer and die in hell forever and ever. God never desired that any man go to hell. But he has, through Jesus Christ, he has offered salvation to all mankind. And that includes everyone in this church, everyone that goes to church here. My uh, real desire is that every person that comes through these doors knows Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's what we teach. That's what we preach. That's what we give out is the love of God. And that's what God wants us to do. We need to serve him and trust in him, honor him in every way. Not everyone's going to do that. Not every church gets along. They all claim they know Jesus Christ, but why don't people get along? I think we can come up with the answer that they look into themselves instead of truly and completely trusting in God. Let me ask a question. What about those that are hurting? Do we have compassion on people? I mean, when we see a hurting person, how does that affect us? Job is seeing these. He's showing his so-called friends, about the hurting ones, about those that don't have or been taken away from. What about them? Do we have compassion? Do we feed the hungry? Do we reach out to the children? Do we want the very best for all mankind? If we didn't, what kind of a church are we? So we have to do that, and that's what we want to do. I'm going to jump over to verse 17. The secret judgment of the wicked. For the morning is to them, even as the shadow of death. If one know them, they are in the terrace of the shadow of death. What's it like to die without Jesus? I mean, we'll, we'll never know that because we're Christian. But think about those that leave this world instantly, just like that, without Jesus Christ. What's the next two minutes going to look like in a lost person? Well, that's scary to think because if they don't have Christ, they're going right in through the gates of hell because they would not call on that name of Jesus Christ and receive salvation. He is swift of the waters. Their portion is cursed in the earth. He beholdeth not the way of the vineyards. Drought and heat consumeth the snow waters, so doth the, God, uh, the grave those which have sinned. Well, that's pretty harsh, isn't it? It really is, but these people that die without Jesus, they have, they have an opportunity. They have, God has made a way for all of them. He's waiting on them. He's looking down on the lost, wanting to bring them to an understanding of what, who he really is and what he has planned for them. The womb shall forget him. The worm shall feed sweetly on him. He shall be no more uh, remembered. And wickedness shall be uh, broken as a tree. Now, let's think about that. Uh, the womb will forget. How many lost people 
are really come up in thought. We, we take Christian people. We all know people that we have been Christians, and we all have a, a good thought about them, maybe a smile about them. But what about the wicked? Wicked that have hurt people. Wicked that have really walked all over people. When they die, what is left? In their thoughts, in what people think of them, because they've hurt people. He evil entreateth the barren that beareth not, and doth not good to the widow. That's terrible to think about. How do we treat people? I know everyone's not real easy to get along with. Many of them, probably not myself at times. But how do we treat other people? Do we show love and care and concern? What about if they're hurting? What about if they're hungry? What's going to be our way in dealing with those? It's a real thought. What God expects from his children. We can choose Jesus, we can choose the Father, and we'll be blessed because we did exactly what God has given us to do. What about Jesus? He fed the hungry. He really loved the little children. And then he went and died for all mankind, for everyone. But why? Why do so many say, well, that's a fairy tale, or I've heard that before, and I don't, it don't uh, relate to me. Well, what about that very second when they leave this world? What else happens then? Can they look back? I doubt it. Can they say, well, I was dealt unfair by God? No, they wasn't. They was given opportunity to change, even as God's children. They were given opportunity. But will they take that? Will they let God change their lives forever and ever? Will they show the world? I'm a Christian. I have been redeemed. I'm saved. I want to do the work for the Father. You know, there's no better work in all of our lives than working for the Father. We may go out and work jobs, and most of us have or do, but what about serving God? That's the sweetest thing that any of us could ever do is just serve God. We don't have to have anything for it other than giving ourselves to him. Trust in the Lord. Let him guide us and mold us and make us. Verse 22, he draweth also the mighty with his power. He riseth up and no man is sure of life. Can you tell me right now how many more days will you live in this life? None of us can say that. We hope for, a, for, you know, time, family, friends, little children. We, we hope for that. But we have no assurance because our lives are in the hands of Almighty God. They are exalted for a little while, but are gone and brought down. Lo, they are taken out of the way as all other and cut off as the tops of the ears of corn. Think about that. Here today, gone tomorrow. Think you got world, the world so great, so good to you today. And tomorrow, find yourself in hell, suffering. Even as a rich man, just give me a drop of water just to, to cool my tongue. But that will not happen. Because like Abraham, there's a gulf between See, God is separating his people from the lost. There is a gulf, and it cannot be crossed. That's why it's so important to make the choice now. Without waiting, without holding back, just seeing yourself for what you really are. And asking God to save your soul. But not everyone will. I know you talk to a lot of people. If you're like myself, you talk to people, you see them, you meet them. You start a discussion with them, it leads into telling them about your Jesus. Some of them say, well, I, I can't come to church, I'm too busy. I've had that said many times. Where is a better place that we can not only meet with God, but we can meet with other Christians? 
that we can build each other up, that we can love one another, and that we can serve God together. That's what God wants us to do. They're exalted for a little while, just a little while. How long is life? It's just, it's just almost nothing. What about eternity? It goes forever and ever. Every day, every moment that we're with Jesus, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be great. And that's what God wants in our lives. They are taken out of the way as all other and cut off at the tops as the ears of corn. What about these bodies? I think about this sometimes. How long are these bodies going to hold us up? Can we say, I'm going to be, I'm going to be well all my life and all into eternity? Can we say that with assurance? We are only useful vessels in the hand of God. We are only receiving from him what he sees fit to give us. But we can't, we can't brag about how great my life is, how things, my, my health is so great. We can't do that. Why? Because God is in control. And that's the message every person needs to hear. Is God is, is faithful, but he's in control of all mankind. I think about uh, those right now that are dying in war. Why do people want to kill other people? Because that is God's creation. What about the little children that are killed? That is God's creation. It is in God's hand. It's not up to man. And that's what God wants us to see. We trust in the Lord. We allow him to mold us and make us, to guide us in a way he sees fit. If we'll trust him, we will see his very best. And that's what he wants for us because he's a merciful God, a loving God. He's a God that desires that all mankind would trust in him. Now, talking about the wicked, I love that verse in Romans 3, 23. And that includes us now. For all has sinned come short of the glory of God. That's me. That's you. But it don't have to stay that way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't let the world suck you in to their ways and the desires that they show. Just trust God. Just give your heart to God. And trust him with all your heart. And let him grow us as he wants to. And that he can be use a, us in a mighty way to go and tell, to show love and care. You know, it really bothers me to think about little children that may be hungry and, and sick. That bothers me. I mean, we, we are given from God to love those little children. Didn't Jesus love them? He did. And he wants us to do this very same. That's what God wants out of his people. But the question is this. Will we trust him? I mean, will we give all to him? Will we put our life, our faith, our all in the hands of God? Will we say, Lord, here am I. Use me for whatever way you see fit. I want to be a soldier of the cross. I want to be one that works in outreach to touch other people. And if we'll do that, I think God will bless because he is a merciful God. And that's what he wants from us. Now, Job, Job was in a hard, hard way here. He could not understand his friends, so-called friends, and they couldn't understand him because they were too busy pointing a finger at him. We are not given a right to point a finger at other people. But we need to be God's people, working for God, and trying to help people. If we'll do that, God will bless. He'll bless his church. He'll bless families. He'll bless all of us if we'll just only trust him. And that's what he's calling us to do. And let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, such deep teaching here about Job, Lord. Job didn't understand what was happening in his life. He did not, could not understand but according to the Bible, he truly was a child of God because he loved you, he stood up for you. He was one 
that wanted the very best for all those around him. And yet his friends really put him down. Lord, that's sad. That's hurtful. But I pray, help us to be just like Job. Help us to accept what you send our way. But we will have to realize that in your time that you'll bring the best. Thank you, Father, for this time together. Thank you for those here. We ask this in Jesus' name, for his sake. Amen. Take up your prayer.